Hello and welcome to yet another episode of This Week in Kedi and Gnome, where I talk about the latest stuff that happened in Kedi and Gnome based on This Week in Kedi blog post by Nate Graham and This Week in Gnome blog post hosted on the Gnome website. I think those are pretty nice sources to take inspiration from. So let's start off with the Kedi side of things. Firstly, there is a nice improvement to Discover, you know, the application to download apps and stuff. Lots of, lots of people say that Discover is not very polished and stuff like that. However, Discover actually improved a lot in the last year or two years, and now it's getting the more time passes better and better. This is yet another improvement in that direction. Now, whenever there is an error message, instead of showing that into a very little gray box on the bottom, as it did before, now there is an actual dialog that shows the complete error right in front of the screen and gives you the option to close it immediately rather than having to wait for the timeout of the little gray box on the bottom. That is a significant step forward for the usability of actually, you know, getting bugs in getting errors, sorry, in Discover. Then let's get into a couple of new features. Firstly, the system monitor or any applet that has the same name, apparently, can now detect and monitor power usage for NVIDIA GPUs. Also, the weather applet that shows you, you know, the weather has now an option to include the temperature, the current temperature as a little badge overlay um, on top of the icon. Similarly to, uh, what was that, the battery. The battery also has the same badge overlay that shows you optionally how much battery is left. I also made a merge request to have the same very badge for the notification applet to show you how many Android notifications you have, but that is currently um, ongoing. Like It hasn't been finished yet, so it's not here yet, but it's something that could land in the future. When you're scrolling through Ocular documents, Ocular is the PDF reader, if you didn't know, now the scroll speed is actually much faster and allows you to, you know, feel that, like you're properly scrolling through a document like you would in a web page or anything else, really. So that is also quite a big step forward for Ocular. What we had so far was not optimal. Another improvement to discover is the task progress page. Up until now, for some reason, the background of the little pop-up that shows you how much, like, the progress of each task that uh, Discovery is running, like installing various apps, the background of that was blue or any color that you set the accent color. And that actually made very hard to see the progress bar, which is also blue or any accent color you have. Now it's white, so it's much easier to actually see how much progress is going on. Finally, always on Discover, because I told you it's getting better, if you're on a Metroid connection, that is, as an example, if you're paying for data so you have some data limit that you don't want to cross, if you have that kind of connection, Discover won't uh, any longer automatically check for updates, because that would waste your limited data. Other significant bug fixes, when you change uh, the, the display layout and then you open up console, up until now, and this is actually a bug I run into very often, uh, the size of the console window would be extremely small, like extremely small. You use it, it, impossible to use, so small that it's impossible to use. Now that has been fixed and it will open up at a normal size. There is also a fix to Latidoc to show you that it's not completely that, and uh, that has been done by David Redondo, sorry. So we got to really thank him for continuing the support of Latidoc. In the latest uh, Kitty Plasma, there was this bug for which applets open through Latidoc opened up in the wrong spot. But now after this uh, fix, they still open at the correct place. As always, you can still go through the complete list. This was like highlights and stuff. You can also see all of the author's name in the link in the description, but let's switch to the GNOME side and see what they are doing. Firstly, we now have a more useful progress bar if you're downloading stuff, <laughs> stuff in uh, Fedora Silver, Silver Blue, thanks to the progress reporting to RPM OS 3. 
And then we have the release of Dynamic Wallpapers version 0.1.0, which is a third-party project, but it's interesting nonetheless. So it's a simple application that helps you make a dynamic wallpaper that changes if you're using light or dark mode. By the way, if this outputs uh, the wallpaper file icon, I guess this could be used in KD Plasma as well because the format for light and dark adaptive wallpapers, as far as I know, is the same one as GNOME's. So yes, this is a GNOME map, but it might be useful in KDE as well. I'm not sure, I even tried. I probably should. <laughs> This version that has been just released uh, brings a new clean design that nicely blends with the GNOME design. It lets you give a name to the wallpaper and then has just this create button that will generate the wallpaper. The application is available currently on FlatHub and AUR if you're on Arch, Arc, Arch. There is an update to an extension for Nautilus called Nautilus Code that allows, that actually, sorry, adds a context menu entry to open up code into text editor, such as VS Code, GNOME Builder, and so on. And this latest version adds support for Nautilus 43 as well. However, this, <laughs> to do this, they had to drop Nautilus 42. So if you're running Nautilus 42, don't update. If you're running 43, do update. Finally, there is another announcement of a new application in the GNOME community. Again, this is a third party application, but GNOME, I think does a very nice job at making sure that even third party applications are all in the same ecosystem. This is an application made by the Avil Skeleton, which I th you might have seen because they also contributed a bit, if I'm not wrong, to Battles. And the application is Upscaler. The, you give it an image, you give it a target resolution to upscale to, and it uses a real ASRGNN and C and <laughs> I tried real ASRGAN NCNN Vulcan that is used to actually do the upscaling and enhancing of image is images. Again, this project is available as Upscaler on FlatUp. I've also mentioned in my channel previously the new application in GNOME that's called Money, and there's a new update of that one as well, which brings some new functionalities. And ex as an example, sorry, now we have groups and you're able to associate a certain transaction to a group. Money will automatically use the local currency symbol as set by your system, and there's more translation translation support. These videos sometimes turn into a let's see how hard is this to pronounce for Niccolo thing. There is also a new version of Battles, which is announced still by the Evil, Evil Skeleton, so I was correct into saying that they also contribute to that project. This brings a complete redesign of the details view. Again, if you're interested for more information to read all of the full change log and stuff, as always, you can check in the video description and you will see the link to this blog post. As a very last thing, there's also a new version still on FlatHub of um, Bootswain, Bootswain, I think it's pronounced, which brings uh, the ability to customize buttons ordered just by drag and dropping them. The description of the application is I guiding a hand when navigating through streams. What is this? Ah, it's to customize the stream deck. Okay, okay, makes sense, makes sense. Yeah. Now you can just plug and drop buttons in the, to organize them on the stream deck uh, layout. So thanks everybody for following. Again, check out the links in the description and uh, see you tomorrow with yet another video.